I was listening to your decoration episode and um, it really hit me that I think I think those belongings are what's adding to my forever long priority list. Um, and I'm a high anxiety person and I'm pretty busy. I have a two year old toddler who has a lot of stuff. I have a husband who's a mechanic who has a lot of stuff. I'm a teacher. I have a lot of stuff. Um, and being high anxiety, I feel like everything is on my priority list. Everything from getting my dog's teeth clean and being a good owner to, you know, teaching my kids certain things and sitting down and reading books with them every day. Um, and I just wanted to find out what I could do to maybe help my anxiety and help me progress in getting rid of some of these things without totally losing my mind. Um, I'm at the point of like wanting to go on leave from work so I can stay in my house and sort through everything and just throw everything away for a week. Um, so I just wanted to find out if maybe there was a better way to do that or a better way to actually prioritize things without thinking everything is top priority. Now, Ryan, I, I was a little bit worried when she said, I'm thinking about taking a leave of absence from my work so I could stay at home. And she had like this little pause there. Mm. And it was just it was the agoraphobe thing that I was talking about. But then she said, I want to stay home for a week. So it sounds like maybe she has a plan to deal with some of this excess stuff that's going on in her lives yeah. or in her life. But but well, her their lives, her family's life, her husband and, and her kid. And obviously she's a teacher. And so she has to deal with a certain amount of things. Now, she talked about many of the belongings being a priority in her life. And mm. the thing that I want to stress here is I think belongings are rarely a true priority. I think what she was saying was all of her possessions. So it started with the decorations. Right. But then she talked about her husband's stuff, her stuff, her kid's stuff. Uh -huh. Like everything that is stressing her out, she feels like they're all her priorities. Yes. But she has so many priorities okay. that it's it's – it's producing this anxiety in her life. Right. And, and so, I mean, obviously, if you go if you go back to the root of the word priority, and uh, Greg McEwen talks about this in his book, Essentialism, um, we didn't have a plural for the word priority until the 20th century. It literally means the first thing. Right. You can't have a hundred the first things. Right. It just doesn't even work grammatically, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so having... having a hundred priorities means I have no priorities at all. I don't have a priority, mm -hmm. right? And I think ultimately she needs to, to she, she said I have a very busy life. And, and the thing I wrote down here, Ryan, is busy does not mix with anxiety. And I've learned that in my own life. Mm. Uh, in fact, I was talking to my doctor on the, he called me up and he was like, hey man, uh, can I bother you? I know you're really busy. And I was like, how dare you? <laughs> Don't you say that to me. That's the worst four letter word in the English language yeah. is busy because really all that means is your life is out of control. And so here's the good news, uh, Fallon. I, I think that you've identified the fact that, hey, you know what? Your life is really busy. It's out of control right now. Exactly. Your yeah. life is out of control. And you've identified that because quite often we don't know we're out of control until we're like spinning off the road and it's too late. We're already headed into the crash. The, the news for you, Fallon, is, yeah, you are headed toward a crash. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen unless you course correct now. But that's the good news. You haven't crashed yet. Mm -hmm. The best time to course correct is before the crash. Yeah, the anxiety that you're feeling right now, Fallon, is is in regards to uh, you've got to take action towards this stuff. Mm -hmm. It is obviously, um, well, you're calling in talking about how it's ca causing anxiety. So if it's affecting you to the point where you're calling us, it's probably affecting how uh, your attitude when you're around your kids, when you're around your husband. So how does she get out of this, Josh? How does she... How does she uh, uh, prioritize her priorities? <laughs> Two things. Number one is I think you have to realize that not everything is equal. And that's yeah. my biggest problem. Like I will have a task list and it can have a hundred priorities on it, right? Yeah. I, I got a hundred priorities on my task list and I'll just start going through them and I'll usually go toward the thing that is easiest first. Why? Because we, we tend to go toward the path of least resistance. Mm. The easiest things are usually the least meaningful things though. And so if I, if I have a hundred things and 80 of them are easy, I'll never get to the 20 things that are actually meaningful mm. uh, or productive 
or something that truly adds value to my life because I'm so focused on, well, I got to check email, got to, uh, got to make sure you're all caught up on Instagram, whatever it is. Like I, I'm just so focused on, well, let's get that off the list, get that off the list, get that off the list. The thing is you can actually get a lot of those things off your list by saying no to them. And so that's the second thing we have to get better at saying no. And, and I'm really good at saying no, except mm. here's the problem for me. My, I, I have a hard time saying no to the people closest to me, Ryan, uh, to Bex and to you. Um, I want, because I really care about you. I want to please you. I want to be able to say yes. Now it's better for me to say yes to you than it would be to some stranger on the street. Hey, can I spend three hours of your time talking to you about <laughs> blogging? I mean, I'd love to, but I don't have infinite resources. I don't have infinite time. So I'd love to, uh, say yes to you before someone like that. But sometimes when I'm saying yes to you or Bex, that means I'm saying no to, to myself. And mm -hmm. I'll give you an example from, from yesterday. Um, Bex likes me to pick her up from the airport. She, her and Ella were flying in yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, for me to go to LAX is about a three-hour trip there and back. What time were they landing? Uh, six o'clock. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, so it could have turned into a four-hour trip. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and, and um, I... I often, almost always say yes. I can count on one hand with three digits left uh, how many times I've said no to that. Yesterday was one. I had to say no to to them and say, hey, can you just please get an Uber? Because I had so, I, I was preparing for this podcast. There's all kinds of irony in being extra anxious pre preparing for an anxiety podcast. <laughs> but, um, and so I, I had a lot of things to do yesterday to prepare for today and tonight we're doing some filming and I was preparing for that mm -hmm. and and uh, I had to call a bunch of people yesterday. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff going on so I just had to say no I, I don't have time to spend three or four hours and which is fine but then on the Uber ride home Bex texts me and, and she's like hey can you go pick me up some Chipotle so that we're you know by the time Ellen and I get home we'll have have dinner there and I'm like okay yeah I mean yes because I don't I'm afraid to say no to you yeah so I said yes and it totally like increased my anxiety levels again because I'm oh. like I'm in the middle of doing this stuff that I, I perceive to be important and and meaningful and but it's also meaningful to provide food for Ella and Bex are coming home but I should have said no and here's here's what you can do why don't you you could do Uber Eats you could do you could have it delivered right to the house if you want I mean there's technology involved so that I don't have to spend. 45 minutes to an hour going to to get you something to eat yeah right and and break that that whole flow and so instead of just ignoring it and letting that fester let my anxiety get higher uh, bex and i had a, a brief conversation about it and she's like oh i'm so sorry you know i, I didn't think about it mm -hmm. i should have i should have thought that way and i said yeah i should have thought that way too i should have said no and said hey can you can you do this and so next time we know and so it's really about adjusting accordingly so yeah. getting better at saying no how do you build that muscle you continue to do it every single day and you'll fail like i failed yesterday but you'll learn something from it and you'll move forward accordingly what a great example for fallon man because relying on her partner relying on her husband for help uh that's huge i mean uh fallon you know here, here's what i would do if i was you so every, uh, everything you said i totally agree the, the thing that i would add is You've got to get clear on what it is that you want to get done, Valen. So write down everything that you want to get done on a list. Do not prioritize it, which is more important, what isn't more important. Just just write it all down so at least you know what you need to get done. And then go to your husband mm. and then say, hey, honey, uh, here are the things that are really, really stressing me out. Yeah. And I know that I've got a problem and that this is stressing me out, but you're such an amazing husband that I know that you're going to go out of your way to help me take care of these things. And if you don't actually help me take care of these, th these things, I know you're at least going to support me taking care of these things because you're such a great husband. Mm. And oh, by the way, when you look at this list, what do you what stands out to you? What what is the most important thing to you? Does any of this stuff stress you out as well and kind of approach it from uh, you know, like a team aspect. I think as you're looking at that as a team, you, you'll look at that list. Maybe there's 20 things on there. For me this morning, I was going through through my, I don't have a to-do list. I have a today list. Mm. And then I have a someday list. Mm. And um, like th that's how I prioritize. And so I was looking at that today list and there were four things on it. And I'm like, okay, is it, what if just in a hypothetical world, I deleted half of these? Mm. Would the world keep spinning? Would my life be okay if I didn't do any of these things? And the truth was there was one thing for sure I could just remove immediately. Mm. Um, and, and my life was still fine. In fact, 
I feel good now because I've removed that responsibility, that anxiety-inducing responsibility. Then that, that allows me to focus on the other two or three things that are truly important. And so mm -hmm. sometimes you don't even have to say, uh, you, well, can you help me out with this? Before you even get to that, you can say, I'm going to instantly say no to these things that aren't important. I pretended they were important. Mm. That I, I treated them as if they were just as important as these other truly important things, but they're not that at all. They're yeah. They're worth deleting. Yeah. So Fallon, come up with a plan. Uh, it, like I said, write down everything that you need to, to to accomplish. Go to your husband and ask him to help you come up with a plan. But, you know, here's the thing, Fallon, is it sounds like you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of things on your plate. Mm. And yes, I agree. She should probably uh, maybe take a couple of these things off the plate if, if possible. Right. But ultimately, to get where you want to be, Fallon, it's going to take a lot of work. And as Josh and I always say, uh, simple is not easy. Yeah. Simple is simple is really, really difficult. In fact, easy is just continuing to ignore these priorities and to continue letting things build up and to continue to go with the flow. And easy can be anxiety producing for yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. For, for me, like if I just start focus on the easy things to do, it means I'm letting I'm, I'm putting on the back burner the things that should be the most important to me. So going with easy will maybe in the short term distract you like the Instagram thing we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. but, but long term, it's just going to increase your anxiety. Now talking about a plan, she said, well, what if I take a week off work and do the things I want to do? That might, that might work for you, but realize that even if you clear your plate completely, there's going to be new things that come onto the plate and that's okay. I mean, cause the opposite is you have nothing on your plate ever. And, I mean, that sounds to me like a not a life well lived at all. Yeah, I don't honestly. I don't. I am totally unbiased to uh, uh, Fallon's plan. Yeah. Whatever plan she comes up with, I support. But right. she's got to come up with a plan. Right, a, a plan that that will actually address the issues as opposed to if taking a week off work would be great. If you just wanted to quit work altogether so you can stay at home and mm -hmm. constantly reorganize your possessions, mm -hmm. that would be a bad plan. So a plan that is actually going to to feel meaningful. Uh, to you, Let's see what else I got here. Uh, she said, I, "I feel like I will lose my mind." Uh, mm. uh, I, 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 well, she said, uh, "It's just something about getting rid of these things." If she if feels like she doesn't get rid of them, uh, uh, how can I develop a plan to get rid of things without losing my mind? Mm. Is, is I think what what she said. And for me, is like, well, you might lose your mind if you don't come up with a plan to get rid oh, of the yeah. things. Well, I, I think what she's really saying is, is she doesn't even know where to start with a plan. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why she feels like she's, she's losing her mind is because there's so much. She doesn't even know where to begin. Yeah. And, uh, Fallon, it doesn't matter where you begin. It really doesn't just start somewhere. Yeah. Come up with a plan and start working the plan. Otherwise, yeah, you are going to lose your mind for sure. Well, Fallon, I'd love to send you a copy of our book, Essential. It's an essay collection, 150 essays about intentional living. And I think there are two, maybe three chapters you'll really find valuable. There's a chapter on priorities in there. And so we're talking about prioritization today. There's an entire chapter about priorities with several essays about how to prioritize. And there's a chapter on success, redefining what success looks like for you. Because success can't be, well, if I accomplish all of my to-do list, then all of a sudden I'm successful. Or if I make a certain amount of money, then I'm successful. That's just another type of to-do list and so there's a chapter on success and there's also a, a chapter on stuff in there and it looks like Fallon is is, is, ha is struggling to deal with some of her stuff so we give you some practical tips to address that stuff Sean if you could reach out to Fallon and give her an audiobook version of essential because uh, if you enjoy the podcast I think you'll enjoy the the audiobook version or if she wants the the book book version or the ebook version we're happy to send those to her as well